Today, I'm gonna to be crash testing Lego trains with a Lego crash test simulator. And I'm gonna rate them based on how well they can protect Ublot, our Lego crash dummy minifigure. And this is the smallest train of the video, the high speed passenger train. As you can see, I bought it used because it was way cheaper. So let's build this one and see what we're working with. That took about 35 minutes to build and this is its top speed. Since that was pretty slow, we're gonna need a way to launch these trains at high speeds into an immovable object so we can simulate a real crane crash. So my plan is to build a Lego train crashing simulator, kind of like the one I built for Lego cars, but on this one, I'm gonna make some upgrades. The first thing we need to build for the simulator is a runway so the trains can run. And then underneath that, I'm gonna build a mechanism to launch the train into a brick wall that's made of Lego. We're gonna need to build this on the bigger table. <laughs> Since we need a ton of space for the runway, this is how long it's gonna have to be. Now we just gotta lock these together and build up four walls. Then we'll put the train track on top and hopefully that'll give us enough room for a mechanism underneath. So now what I'm doing is locking in these Technic pieces and I'm putting a couple of orange bricks kind of like that underneath it so that it has something to ride on. Then I come in with my hammer and hammer it down. And then on this side, I wanna add a window so I can actually see the mechanism. So I'm gonna use a bunch of these glass pieces and just stick them right on here, all the way down. Now that I have this empty box all finished and built up, the next thing I need to do is actually build the mechanism that's gonna launch the trains at the wall. And for that, I came up with a pretty genius idea. My plan is to use this really stretchy elastic and make sort of like a slingshot underneath the simulator, which will be connected to a cart on a track that'll launch the train when we release it really fast into the wall. For the cart, I'm thinking we use the actual train tracks and build a track underground. It'll be like a double sideways track. Then we can put these things, which are just Lego wheels without tires, in between. So now we have our cart. The problem with this is it's providing a lot of unnecessary friction because one side of these wheels, when they're rotating, wants to push the track back and the other side wants to roll forward. So maybe we had two of these. The other two wheels will need to go slightly offset so they don't rub. Boom. Since the wheels are independent, they can all rotate. Oh wow, that thing flies. Okay, so now the issue we have is that we need a big stick to come up from this and then come to the surface. The problem is there's a bunch of these struts going across, so we can't really do that. But if we turn this on its side, we could use a metal Lego axle to come all the way up to the top, which will push our train. Let's build up this card a little better. So this is option one. We have this, which is a metal Lego axle, coming up from the thing. The problem with this is, as soon as there's a whole lot of tension pulling this front part forward, this is just gonna pop up like that, which is a pretty big issue. So my next idea, we turn it upside down. Now we have essentially the same thing, except when we push this back, when there's tension on this, it doesn't break the car and separate the tracks. Come on, just stay together. There we go. So on this side, this is where I'm gonna crash, which means on this side is where we need to build the track. But we need to build this floor to be higher because I don't want the track all the way at the bottom. I line this bottom area with Duplo because it's in the Lego system and it'll help us build up without having to use a lot of bricks. Is that high enough? I'm gonna go with it. Grab our tracks and put them right on top like this. I kinda wanna have them coming out the back here because that way we can put the pin in. Now we get to hammer it down. Perfect. Now we need to flip this and make another one right on top. Then we can attach the elastic to the front and hopefully it should work. Okay, now this guy flips over. We can snap this in, boom. Now we got the bottom and top tracks installed. We gotta attach the elastic. What I wanna do is I wanna have a tensioning system on this side, that way we can control how much power it actually goes with. We just gotta figure out how to store up all that energy. And I think the best way to do that is to build a ratchet. I'm not sure where this design came from, but we take one of these Lego gears, take our metal Lego axle, because there's gonna be a lot of torque on this and a regular axle would just bend. Basically we want something like this, where it can turn this way, as soon as you turn it back the other way, it will catch. But this piece needs to be in just a slightly different position. Okay, so this is the ratchet I came up with. As you can see, we have these two controls that'll be available from outside the machine. So if we tie this on here, build this up, a lot, and then when we release it, the tension is released. Then we can decide how fast it goes by just simply building up the tension with this ratchet, which we need to snap down in the machine so it's not all over the place. All right, test. So as you see, we can bring our cart back 
and then throw in our pin. All we have to do is just twist our little thing here. That will build up tension, and where I want to be is not at the end of this. Here goes. <laughs> that's promising, that's promising. Now all we gotta do is build a wall right here for them to actually crash into, and then finish the top of this, and this thing will be ready to go. We'll put some long Technic beams on the bottom just to keep this thing lock it together and make it stronger. Now let's line the top of this thing with some tracks. So I built some snot bricks into the wall, that way we can attach different collision objects to the front of it. Then on the back here, I'm snapping together a ton of these Technic bricks to brace up this wall. So if I connect four bricks with Technic and then keep stacking them, I think we can get this area really strong. Well, we gotta fix that part, but... It's coming along. All right, guys, the LEGO Train Crash Testing Simulator is finally complete. We've got some of these crash objects to rotate through, and of course, we have our LEGO Ooblot minifigures. By the way, guys, I'm actually selling these LEGO Ooblot Crash Test Dummy minifigures. He's made to look like the Ooblot Crash Test Dummy we used last year to crash test LEGO cars, but this guy will actually fit in minifigure size stuff. So you guys can crash test your LEGO cars, drop a LEGO house on him, put him in a helicopter and see if it flies. And it's printed on genuine real Lego parts by Brick Tactical, the sponsor of this video. So if you want to get one of these guys, you can click the first link down in the description. The first 10 people to order will get these 10 numbered minifigures that are actually used in the crash tests in this video. Brick Tactical also offers a variety of custom printed minifigures on their website, ranging from iconic game characters to movie characters and historic military minifigures. These are all printed on genuine Lego parts, just like our Ooblot minifigure, so you know you're getting that Lego quality. They also have a massive inventory of custom weapons and accessories, and all those are injection molded using ABS plastic, which is the same plastic Lego uses to make their parts. They actually have some really cool molds, like this tactical katana, or even this printed energy pistol. There's over 1,500 minifigures and accessories to choose from, and they're all made in the US. So if you want to check out their site, you can use the second link in the description, or you can go to bricktactical.com to see what they have. So now we have the entire crash test simulator built with the crash wall and a bunch of props we're gonna put in front of it to actually crash into. I'm gonna wear eye protection so that I don't die. So we're gonna crash the passenger train first. And then back here, stick this pin through, and then we just wanna put that between the two cars. And then we're gonna put some oobots in here, so we'll put one as the driver. We actually have some room in this cab back here, so we can put a couple of them in chairs. And then the first obstacle I'm gonna use is this crash test car, which I'm gonna put right there, and we'll stick another oobot inside of it. And then the last thing we gotta do to make this go really, really fast is build up the tension over here. And the worst way to do that is to lean over it so that it snaps in your face. You can see down here that tension actually building on the elastic. Boom, and there we go. Now we are ready to actually crash this thing. Did you hear me just swallow? You all right? Yeah, I was just nervous. In three, two, one. Dude, I did not expect that to actually do that. That was insane. <laughs> I mean, look at this damage. First car just got completely obliterated. The test dummy car got obliterated, and the I think this guy was the actual driver. Either way, both of them got ejected from their vehicles, so we got like a deep gash in the front of the train. Wow. The second car, everyone's fine. Other than the front, the rest of this stayed together, so I'd give this crash test six out of 10. It actually held together pretty well, except the front guy, you know, perished. Let's build the next one. The next largest train we have is the Express Passenger Train. 729 pieces and cost about $160. This one is Express, so I'm hoping it'll go faster. Let's build this one up. And here we have the Express Passenger Train. As you can see, I think it goes pretty fast. This thing actually... Anyway, the cool thing about this set is it actually has lights built into the front here. Check this out. You can actually turn it up with this remote here and get those super bright. So that's really cool. But my favorite part, they added opening doors on every level. So we can actually put cameras and oobots in here because there's like chairs and stuff. Let's see how well this one survives. So for this one, there's like a whole kitchen. So I'm gonna put one guy in the kitchen like that. And then I'll put a guy sitting down right over here. You see him through the window there. I'm just gonna put a new blot right there. 
for the next obstacle, I'm just gonna use this little block. All right, Lego Express Train crash test in three, two, one. Hey, that one I feel like I didn't build up a whole lot of tension, but we still got a really, really great crash. Wow, even the lights in the front came out. <laughs> <laughs> How did it do? Hey, that guy's still standing up actually. As you can see, this guy is still sitting down, so he's fine. But the whole cabinet here in the front came out and kind of crushed that guy, so. The back cabin fared pretty decently. And then the front, the train tracks came off and the entire front window. Did that go underneath or something? Oh, there it is, on the floor, right? <laughs> that doesn't really keep the uh, the front guy safe, and since he's the guy tra driving the train, I'd give this one a four out of 10 crash rating. The people in the back kind of got crushed, but it looks really cool, so. The next train we're gonna build is the heavy hauler train. This one has a bunch of pieces, I forget. Uh, we'll see what this one does. Here we go. Check it out, these Lego trains actually have metal in them. This is crazy to me, I've never built a Lego train before. And you just snap it in, and boom, metal axle in a Lego set. We have the heavy haul train all built up, as you can see. This one has a lot of different cars and they all do different things. This guy here is cool, because if you stop it, you can actually dump out whatever it's carrying. Now this one has a real helicopter on it. It's real, real stinky. I feel like these motors are getting better as we go through the years. Like this is a lot faster than the first one. The first one could have been dead. Yeah, it still doesn't do much. Let's test it out. This guy back. Oh, do me a favor, release that tension knob, Christian. Pretty decent mechanism, actually. So now for this one, I'm gonna take two Ublots, put one guy in the excavator. These are tied together, and then I'll throw Ublot in the front here, slap this guy on the track here. All right, heavy hauler versus Ublot. Here we go. In three, two, one. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> What's still connected? It didn't, oh. Take two, three, two, one. It did the same thing. He's, he's still untouched. I know, Ublot just hasn't died yet. We gotta modify the train a little so that this thing will actually grab it. In three, two, one. There we go. That time it went. Poor Ublot. No. Oh, dude, dude, look at his head. Just got demolished. Dude, number 10, whoever gets number 10, <laughs> sorry about the head and the back of it, it's cracked. Look, there's a little indention. <laughs> Man, that hit hard. You can see the front of the guy in the cockpit. He's totally fine. This thing came up a little bit, but he was protected. And the guy in the back, protected as well. The train fared super well. 10 out of 10 crash test. This thing stayed together and protected the people driving it. So this one's the best so far. Let's build up the next one. Up next, we're gonna build the Lego cargo train. And these are getting bigger and bigger. This one has 1,126 pieces and costs $202. So I think the tape's already coming off the side. So who knows if this is a scam? It's not. I had to buy some of these used because they're just such old sets. I just gotta say, I haven't even started on the train yet, but this thing, it's got a fork with rubber band on it, and you can like take it, you drive up to a pallet, and then just like pick it up, and it picks it up. That is so cool. Whoever designed this, A plus to you. And here we go, here we have the freight train. It goes decently fast. This one's actually pretty cool. It's got a working crane, you can extend the end. I love these Lego sets with like real play features because you can actually do stuff with them and that's just what makes them fun. So now we can bring this guy up like that, turn it around, drop it off. That's just so much fun. Beep, beep. This is super cool, I just like that. So this one, we have two cabooses, cabise. I don't know. For the target, I'm gonna replace this guy 
with this, which actually came in one of the sets. It might've been this one, but it's basically a train stopper. I doubt that's gonna stop the train at all, but we'll see. <laughs> put this guy in the front here, <laughs> like that. And then in the back, I'm gonna put a little mini camera and then we'll put a little Ublat riding a snowmobile. Totally against regulation. I don't think they let people do that on trains. You know, we'll have to put him in sideways. Here we go. In three, two, one. Dude, best crash yet for sure. Oh my gosh. this damage the whole front half just came apart dude we're missing a new block no he's safe he's safe in the front okay so the whole train came off the track it probably would have exploded by now so this guy is still on here this thing didn't break apart so the snowmobile is good but the rest of the train came off probably the most obliterated so far so i'd say this one is a three out of ten that was a super cool crash though let's build the next train the next biggest build we have is the lego cargo train this one is really cool it comes with a lot of pieces and it costs probably more than the last one so let's build it oh i didn't even notice this it also has a car carrier on it so we can put lego cars here Mental challenge. If there's a train going 80, how does this thing go? If there's a train going 90 miles an hour on a track, if you have nine ooblots on one side and the subscribe button on the other, which one are you gonna hit? A... Subscribe. <laughs> so check it out, now we have the freight train. It drives, I'm not gonna put it up to max speed. I'm not gonna do it. All right, maybe I'll do it. Hey. Hey, this one's pretty balanced, actually. He's dead. So this set's pretty cool. I'm gonna put an Ooblot in each one of these cars and then see what happens when it crashes. It'll probably be fine. And we'll put another Ooblot on top of this box car, just to see. And of course, we need to put a guy in the driver's cab right here. Okay. All right, that's 35. Let's see what happens here. In three, two, one. Wow, I think we derailed about halfway down the track. It did crash. As you can see, there's a bit of damage done to this guy. Oh, whoa. This totally busted the stud, so something must have hit that really hard. As you can see, this guy's fine in here. Number one. Yeah, these guys are protected. This guy's actually still sitting down in his seat. So this is a pretty decent crash test of a train. And then this thing did not break. <laughs> Only like one wheel broke off of the whole thing. This car actually flew off, but the guy inside is totally fine. And the car on the bottom just kind of rolled forward. I'd give this a 10 out of 10 crash test. This thing survived really well. The only thing that broke off was the bottom of this guy. So yeah, let's build the next one. For the next set, we're gonna build the Orient Express. This looks like a lot of building to be honest. <laughs> Interestingly enough, this train is not even motorized. It's a Lego Ideas set. I don't know if this is based on the movie where somebody got, uh, but it looks like a cool set, so. And here we have the Orient Express. Really, really well detailed. The insides of these cars are literally fully furnished, fully detailed. You can see in this one, there's a bedroom, a bathroom, another bedroom. On this guy here, we have a dining train, I guess. I think for the test, what I'm gonna do is just remove the coal train. Maybe just link two together like that and see how that runs. Inside here, we have some tables. We can throw some guys in here. And then we put one more Ooblot. Well, there goes five. We lost five. No getting him out of there. I'm gonna use this as the obstacle. It is at 40 tension. And here we go. Lego Orient Express crash test in three, two, one. Dude, it didn't even hit the wall, it hit up here. I think the Orient Express actually flew. The whole back cabin just got left behind. The front of it just got completely demolished. There's the back, so anyone who's in here would have just been gone. <laughs> it hit the wall. It didn't even hit this thing here. I'll do the back cabin one more time. Dude. 
code. That one really flew. As you can see, all Ooblots are secure, even though the front half of the thing literally broke off. The Orient Express altogether, I'd give a five out of 10. It didn't do terrible, but it didn't do great either. This is the winning train. Huge thanks for watching. Make sure you check out this video where I crash test Lego cars. And I'll talk to you in the next one. See ya.